This time on the UK Brewery Project, we're looking at new buns. I suppose the story of new buns begins with Gordon McKenzie and Emma McIntosh, who were a couple and are based up in Scotland, and they moved down south to London in about 2012. Um, Gordon ended up working at Siren Brewery in Berkshire when it opened in 2013. And I've done a, an episode on Siren, which you can click on the card to watch. Um, Emma, meanwhile, had found a job at the Colonel in London. Um, Gordon spent about two years working at Siren before moving across to join Emma at the Colonel Brewery. Uh, whilst they were working at the brewery, they uh, met Freddie Bergsheff and um, Johnny Hamilton, as always, from Butchering Names, sorry about that, um, who both worked at uh, Beavertown Brewery. Now, Freddie had joined Beavertown in sales in about 2013, and Johnny, meanwhile, had previously studied and lived in Edinburgh, including um, working a stint brewing at the Hanging Back Brew Pub up in Edinburgh. He moved down to London to work for Beavertown on their barrel aging programme. Now, they all became good friends and drinking buddies. Gordon and Emma had always had an idea to open their own brewery one day. So in 2018, they began looking into it seriously. Um, at an auction, they found, bid for, and won an old Briggs brew kit, which was previously um, a pilot brewing plant that used to be used at the Molson Coors uh, Brewery in Burton upon trent The kit was in some need of some elbow grease to get it back into working order again, but they weren't uh, you know, against any hard work at that stage to get it up and running. In 2019, they managed to secure a site up in Leaf, Edinburgh, and Gordon and Emma went up there and started work on their brewery. And by work, I mean long hours, digging up the ground, removing concrete. They were working long, long hours on it, hard manual work the whole time. Now, their original business plan was to focus on draft keg um, in, well, draft beers in keg and cask only. Uh, to provide to beer pubs in Edinburgh a bit further afield. And the aim was for these beers to be sessionable um, in the range of like four to 5%. And they would be aiming at the pails and the lagers. So the quad, had fr the quad of friends had got their floor in, tanks, and even tap room built. And they had a steam generator for the brew house, um, which had been ordered. Um, a gas engineer was due to come uh, fit it on the 1st of April 2019. Um, however, this is the obligatory, and then COVID hit. The installation was delayed and then cancelled, um, and they were not only able to produce beer, but the pubs they were looking to sell to had shut. Um, they had the supplies and the whole business idea was now up in the air. So they had to rethink the whole business plan and quite quickly. Um, they knew they would have to switch to selling packaged beer to consumers, but they didn't have the funds available to buy a can in line. Um, they were also unsure of how one of the mobile can in lines would work, especially as they're unsure of what beer they would be brewing and what quantity it would come out like. So, after weighing up all their decisions, they decided to temporarily close the doors on their as yet unopened brewery. Um, they then reached out to their friends at Colonel and they sort of reached an agreement to contract brew at their facility. Um, they knew that the Colonel had the facility to both brew and bottle their beers, which they could then sell on to the public. Um, the first beer that they brewed with at the Colonel uh, was a pale ale. Now I don't have that exact one, but I do have some sort of single hop uh, later variety releases here. What I shall do is open the second beer that they brewed at the Colonel, and that was the table beer. Now the, this is only 3%, but it's a mosaic table beer. Um, again, I know I said four to 5% session range, but a table beer at 3% is definitely within the range of what I would say they could aim at. So let's get this poured out. There we go. And 
we're looking at a lovely crisp clear coloured beer with a, a nice one finger head, white fluffy head on top. And that mosaic smell comes straight through. That, that's what I was hoping for. You know, table beer with a lovely hop nose, that's good. Now, I'm, I'm expecting this to be good. Um, I always find that it may feel a bit lighter, but the flavor's there. Unlike 0% beers, this actually, uh, you know, has a bit of body to it. And so the flavor normally tastes better. Let's uh, tuck in and try this. obligatory first beer of the day as well. Um, that is really good. That's good. That's really good. I think that mosaic hop uh, and the way they've put it together, it, I'm not gonna say you can't tell it's light or thin, but if you give that to me blind, I wouldn't say it's 3%. I would probably say, yeah, maybe four, low fours. That is really good, um, especially for a table beer. Um, when they first actually brewed and bottled these beers, they didn't have a bottle design because obviously they weren't planning to go into bottles. And um, they actually were lucky that um, at the Colonel guy called Jonah came up with their sort of, I'll say simplistic design, but recognizable. Now, I should just point out, so the, the New Barn's name um, came for um, came from Emma's family farm back in Angus, uh, and the branding, um, the branding itself of New Barn's wasn't created by Jonah. This just the color design for the labels, you know, the two tone uh, and the, the layout. The design for their brewery name and the logo came from um, a box of old beer mats that. Um, Emma had um, rummaged through. I think her dad had won at an auction, uh, which again, intriguing way to find something. It'd be, it'd be nice to see what the basis of, uh, you know, what, what beer mats she'd found and used. That'd be interesting. Um, for their third beer, the team actually um, turned to Burnt Mill, who are based in Ipswich. Now, Burnt Mill had a can in line and uh, they were friends with the team up there as well. So they selected Burnt Mill as their contract brewery for the next beer, as they had tasted lagers Burnt Mill had previously pr produced. And they know they had the equipment and know-how to produce lagers. Now, lager isn't easy to produce, as everyone thinks, only because it's mass-produced in vast quantities by the multinational breweries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up their oat lager. Yes, an oat lager. Totally different in style than you would expect. Let's crack this open and get this into the glass. Oh wow, got a got a whiff of that straight away. I think. All right, so 4.8% oat lager. What um I just want to double check what they've used. Yeah, it doesn't say what hops at all that may be in here. There is, uh, it's not the hop that's overpowering. There's no hop, it's it's just malt. It's a malty lager. It's gonna be clean, no doubt. It's clear. It's actually looking a lot more paler than the 3% uh, table beer. Yes, sir, try this. Hmm. It's perhaps not as clean as I was expecting. It's a lager, but it's got a distinctive taste. That's probably oat at that stage. I do prefer the 3% table beer though to the oat lager, but it's, it's inoffensive. <laughs> it's inoffensive like most lagers anyways, but it's all about having something that's easy to drink and you can go back to. On a warmer day, I'd probably be smashing that, but I'd probably be smashing that as well. But um, it's it's decent, but probably not to my style liking, whereas the Mosaic, because it's hoppier, um, I definitely like it. So yeah, this was their third beer 
that they'd made. And um, once they brewed these, well, were in the process of brewing them, the next step was to sell them. So they decided to go down the direct sales route. They set up a web store, they put out a press release, and on the 23rd of April, 2020, um, the site went live. Um, though this method, so they were doing them as pre-sales. So they made over 400 pre-sales um, in their first week before they'd even bottled or canned the beer. Um, and on, inevitably there were problems. Nothing ever is smooth sailing. So the labels that they had designed and ordered weren't delivered in time. So they had to label um, all the cans and bottles themselves. The courier they planned to use, um, you know, said it couldn't take them on as the volumes increased so much due to the COVID lockdown. So they had to find um, a last minute provider um, to do the courier for them. But they managed to get the beers out um, and uh, then they could start, you know, moving on to what they wanted to do. So with money now flowing in the door, they could um, put money down for, you know, a canning line, which wasn't originally in their plan, but with lockdown, it changed. So they put an order in for a canning line. Um, and I believe they brewed a few more of these batches at Colonel to obviously tide them over as well. By the end of summer, with the country reopening, They'd managed to resolve the issues with the gas engineer and they finished fitting out the brewery and they began making their own beers on their own equipment. I believe they were making roughly about 7,000 pints a day. And this door, the beer was going out the door as quick as they were making it at that stage. So they had built up a name locally for themselves, but they also had a lot of friends in the, the beer world. So there was a lot of orders coming in from some of those other breweries to try their beers they were making. As you would imagine, now they're on their own equipment, the amount of beers um, soon began to increase. Um, the focus was still on, uh, you know, light sessional beers, although strong export beer at Lemson did slip in last winter, which would be an interesting one if I kept my hands on it and try it. And that sort of brings us round to um, up to date with the brewery um, that they're young as I said in their infant infancy but they are producing some good beers as well so going through their core range the oat lager is one of their core beers at 4.8 percent um, and then obviously the table beer is one of theirs at three percent as well um, they do I don't think i've got it actually no they so they do a um a german pilsner at 4.2%. Uh, um, they do the stout here at 5%, which they first brewed last November. They also have uh, one called Lager Beer, which is a 5.5% Hellers. And then they've got their pale ales. So they have an ever-changing variety of pale ales uh, where I believe it's a bit like Kernel. They have the same base recipe, but they then will vary the hops. So these two, I believe, are both single hop series. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, oh no, maybe it's not single hop, these ones, dual hops. Yeah, that's Simcoe. Ooh, don't know why I got that one. Uh, but we've got the Cashmere and Halatau Blanc. Um, so it's not a single hop versus dual hop. I'm going to crack this one open. But as I said, they're, they're writing changes on these all the time. So it is a case of um, get it while you can, because they're not probably going to brew that one again. They're just trying loads of different hop varieties. Here we go. Put that back over there. Okay, we have a clear uh, beer. I can smell the hops on it. There's a lot of dank hop smell there. That's definitely more hoppier than I was perhaps thinking it might be. Wow. Maybe it's the hop variety that's given off that massive dank hop nose. Right, let's get in and taste this. There's a lot of hop oil, yeah. I can't work out whether I really like that. Um, I'm really liking the amount of hop flavor of it, yes. I definitely would drink the can. But 
I don't know if I'd order another one. It's one of those ones that is really, it is enjoyable. Um, it's, I would say it's not too carbonated. There's not much carbonation overall in the mouth on this one. Just a gentle carbonation. You can see how quick I'm drinking it actually. <laughs> I said, I'm not too sure, but I do really like the hop oils. I just feel it's definitely not something you could drink a whole session of. Um, it would be, you have that one and that's it. You, I don't know if I would hunt it out and look for it again. Whereas the table beer, I, I definitely would. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'd, we'd be in such a, a young brewery. It's sort of hard to determine, you know, what is one-offs and what's seasonal. Um, so beers such as their Hanna Lager, which is a um, Czech malt hello. So it's Czech style malt grown in the UK, um, comes in at five and a half percent. I think that's seasonal, or it could be a one-off. They also done that, uh, you know, the plain dark beer, which was their 11% strong stout. Um, that could be coming out again this year uh, for winter, I, I don't know. Um, they also done a PX Pilsner, which is a five and a half percent lager, which was based off a 1880s recipe from a uh, Younger's Brewery. Um, but again, that seems like maybe a one-off or a special, but it might not be. I don't know. <laughs> Too young to tell. Um, awards wise, again, they're young, but they did get a really, really important award. Um, they came second in Rate Beer's New Brewery Awards for 2020, which I think is a big, um, a, a big deal at that stage, because it's actually, I believe, based off ratings across the site from the drinkers for new breweries within that time period. So they came second, and this isn't UK, this is globally. Um, they beat um, left-handed giant um, brew pub, which had opened during that period, not left-handed giant, the actual uh, brewery, the brew pub one where they brew as well. And it came ahead of that by like three places, I think. So yeah, this is new barns. You might be seeing quite a bit of them in some of the bottle shops. As said, the stout logo, you'll recognize straight away with how the bottle's being done. But um, otherwise it's quite a, a clean design. You'll come across the pails and just working out which is which you've got to look because it's same design, just obviously different um, hops written at the bottom. I'm going to finish with the one that I actually enjoyed the most. Surprisingly, it's the 3% table mosaic beer. That is really good. Very, very sessionable and smashable. Take care, everyone. Thank you.